Our Google Home Mini was among one of many tax time indulgences my wife and I bought this year. Completely unnecessary to life, but uh, nice to have. We hooked it up to our Wi-Fi along with our phones. Hell, we even bought special light bulbs for it to control the lights in the house. Everything was fine for the first two or so months. The Google Home Mini started learning more and more. Uh, the kids even nicknamed her Susan Google. The modern technologies of today are wonderful, aren't they? Susan Google told jokes to our kids, informed us about upcoming weather conditions, and set our alarms for the morning. There was even one time where, as a joke, my wife told the Google Home system how much she loved it. The speaker crackled to life with the sound of applause and awes. The Google Home Mini replied with, As you can hear, you're not so bad yourself. That was a neat little feature. Kind of creepy. But my wife thought it was adorable. And who was I to argue? If she was happy, I was happy. One afternoon, Morgan and I got into an argument. We were trading jabs and insults, pushing blame back and forth like a couple of grade school children. The light on our Google Home Mini lit up in succession, followed by her robotic voice. I'm sorry you're going to have to slow down. I'm having trouble understanding you. Well, that stopped the fight right then and there. Morgan and I looked at each other in shock, completely surprised by what we'd just heard. Google Home Mini started doing other various things that we'd never asked it to do as well. I figured at first it was triggered by the words OK, or Hey, or maybe even the word Google. Perhaps that's why it was picking up on things that it wasn't supposed to. However, last Thursday night, Morgan and I were laying in bed in an intense session of lovemaking. Morgan's drowsily satisfied voice asked Google to play the sounds of a fireplace. It was really relaxing. Falling asleep consumed by the sounds of a roaring fire and complete safety. The next morning, Morgan and I awoke to the taste of ash on our tongues. The sound of burned destruction was heavy in the air. We rushed through the house, room by room, making sure that everything was okay. Fortunately, the house was fine. However, the house across the street was not. Piles of smoke billowed from various spots on the roof. It looked like most of the left side of the house had burned away overnight. The last ambulance was just leaving as Morgan and I came outside. My wife rushed up to the nearest fireman, breathless, and asked, Our neighbors, Bailey and Jonas, are, are they okay? They had a dog, small, maybe 20 pounds, brown, white, named Muffin. Did you make sure that everyone got out of the house? Thankfully, Bailey and Jonas only suffered from minor smoke inhalation. By the time Muffin was found, nothing could be done, unfortunately. Strange. So I thought, uh, some glitch in the Matrix shit, you know. That's impossible, though. Has to be just an eerie coincidence. I could tell, though, that Morgan thought the same thing by the haunted look on her face. A week later, I was home alone in bed having trouble sleeping while Morgan was working the night shift. I guiltily thought of how peaceful I slept at the sounds of a fire, almost as if the Google Home Mini read my mind. Her voice chirped over the speaker, playing sounds of a thunderstorm. The muffled sounds of thunder, pitter-patter of rain lulled me into a deep sleep, one I desperately needed. I woke to my phone ringing. Looking over at the clock, I was beyond irritated to see it was four in the morning. Google Home Mini was playing something different this time, a rhythmic, soothing beat, familiar yet unplaceable at the same time. It almost sounded like the misfiring of a heartbeat. Remembering that Morgan was on the night shift, I sprang out of bed and ran over to my phone. It was my sister, Kelly. A ball of dread formed in the pit of my stomach, fearing something had happened to my niece and nephew. I picked up the phone. Tommy, I have to talk to you. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Are you okay? Is, the, is it the kids? What? Yeah, the kids are fine. I just... I got a call from Dad's nursing home. The back of the building was struck by lightning during a freak storm. Five rooms were completely destroyed, including Dad's. My, oh my god, is he okay? He was really shaken up at first, but I think he's fine now. I never thought I'd say I was thankful for his dementia, but I'm hoping he forgot about it 20 minutes after it happened. I'm having him come stay with me until the rooms are reconstructed. I just, I just wanted you to know the woman in the room next to him suffered a heart attack and passed away. 
Must have scared the poor deer to death. After hanging up the phone with my sister, I honestly and truthfully considered throwing the whole damn system away. It only cost me $14, and so far the events it seemed to create cost these people thousands. Some of them their lives. How could this be connected, though? Literally not possible. No jailbreak, hacker, system update could enable a smart home system to tell the future. When Morgan finally did come home, I was sitting at the kitchen table waiting for her with two cups of coffee and a pack of cigarettes. She could tell the second she walked in the door that something was wrong. Lightning struck the nursing home Dad lives in. In the middle of the night, he's okay. But his neighbor, Rosa, didn't make it. I continued to tell her about the storm sounds and the thumping sounds I woke up to. I want to throw it out. Let's get rid of it altogether. You're the one that hooked it up. Please, just take it down. Her mouth was pursed. Her brown eyes held a look of incredulous defiance. Absolutely not. There's been some electrical storms like crazy this week. Something funny is definitely going on with the weather, but it's not because of our smart system. Heat lightning has been popping up all over town. It's a wonder more places haven't caught fire by now. We're not getting rid of it. I'm sorry. I love you, but you're being ridiculous. Was I? I started second-guessing the events of the last five days. But if one more thing goes wrong, I'm taking a hammer to it while you're at work. When the alarm went off this morning, it wasn't the usual series of bells and chirps. Instead, the mamas and papas crooned California dreaming through the speakers. Two children were heard laughing in the background. The speaker then played my wife's voice. Thank you so much. It was really nice to get out of the house. Tom's lost his damn mind. Boys, quiet down. You're going to get us into a wreck. What followed next was the blare of a car horn. And shattering glass. Then there was nothing. Complete silence. I've held my family hostage in this house for the past week. Battery's been disconnected from our vehicle. I even hid those shoes away so they couldn't get outside to travel by foot. Morgan doesn't seem to understand that I'm doing this for us. We need to protect our children. Every, every time the Google Home Mini has predicted an event, there's been a death. A car pulls into the driveway. My father-in-law gets out of it and starts to approach the house. His footsteps are hurried, annoyed almost. Morgan flies by me in a flurry with our sons in hand. Tom, I need to go out to the store today. We have no food and the kids are going stir-crazy. We will all be fine. Relax and please don't fight me on this, especially not in front of my dad. You know, you know he hasn't always been your biggest fan. She gives me a dismissive kiss on the cheek and runs out the door disrupting her father's path before he reaches the front porch. I scream after them, but it's too late. In the faintest of notes, almost, almost outside of my periphery, my hearing a song plays through the car radio as Morgan's dad drives away. All oh, the leaves are brown, and the sky is gray. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta, or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivorymonoclete, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas, in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links, in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Ginobaga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burroughs, Stephen Van Hus, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Krause, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Titty Connoisseur? Melissa Swegart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. 
Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>